Okay, so let's get this little nuisance out of the way. So it looks like if I just carefully bend this right about there. Actually, you know, I'm just kind of sliding this around on his face. You may want to put a paper towel down or something. I never thought about that. If you're going to scooch this around, a soft cloth or something on the face, keep from scratching the solder mask of that face up. But that stuff is actually pretty damn tough. Okay, so I'm going to bend that leg back up and spend an hour stripping it. That enamel is really on there on this wire. Must have bought some quality wire. heat this end up and try and burn the rest of it off of there, which isn't going to work. I love how this the smoke goes right for your face every stinking time. Actually, you probably ought to have a little tiny fan to blow the fumes away. Actually, that burned quite a bit of that off of there, amazingly enough. On the underside, though, that is not true. Okay. So we're going to give that one more little zap from the solder here. Keep the tip of your soldering iron really clean. Actually, clean it off every time you're ready to solder, I find works really well. I'm just going to touch that on there. And we're just going to bend that down. Sorry about that. Just going to bend that down. that easy. It really is easy. You, know, you don't need me to tell you how to solder. Okay. Now, here's what it will... Here's what it will look like. This is... This is, this is kind of annoying. That black mask really makes this tough to photograph. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus. Focus. There it goes. See how that isn't soldered all the way there? It's not critical. This one I'm pretty, pretty pleased with. There's a really good example. See how it's soldered out there? Now, electrically, it's fine. So you can either pick at this stuff or leave it the hell alone. I find that the more you fiddle with it, the more trouble you get into it. And it is hooked up, so I'm not going to dink with it. As long as it's electrically hooked up. And you can confirm that with your voltmeter. Okay, one down. That only took two hours. Okay, so I just took, just took a little break, gather up the tools, Put everything away, put the cover back over the knife. Yeah, we'll put the tools off to the side here. And the solder. Yeah, you probably don't need more than I can't imagine it needing more than six foot of solder for this project. Actually I'm amazed they didn't give you some. Well they can only give you so much. Okay, so I'm just rolling up some of the, the, the tools here and the extra magnet wire.
and just neaten up the old workbench. You get too many things out, you get in a mess, you get into trouble. Okay, so we're done. I'm going to tick that off. Okay, so according to the instructions in Mr. Darwin, I have successfully completed the probably the, one of the more annoying parts of kit building, which is getting the coils done first. Uh, here it says, uh, let's mount the resistors. It's easy to mount the small components by bending them into a W shape. They show kind of a, a little loop. They, and they're trying to get this to mount on the circuit board. So the circuit board, you know, it sits on the board like that. Um, it says, tin one of the pads on the board, hold the end of the component, move it into place, tack it down on the tinned pad. Might help. Um, then solder the opposite pad, then re-solder the first pad and make a quality solder joint and then trim the ends. That sounds pretty logical. We'll give that a try. So, then mark off the resistor as you proceed. Well, I don't know about that. It sounds pretty shaky. Um, there's no reason to finish these kits in one day. When I was a kid, it was some epic race to see how quickly I could burn up the circuit board or point to point wiring before. Um, you know, getting the kit completely done. And actually, I missed the point of some of the kits. Hang on. What are you doing? Why are you playing with a coat hanger? I mean, if you want to be hit by coat hangers, it's the cat. So here it says, Mark off the resistors, uh, mount the first resistor. Now, nowhere on here does it show a kind of a big thing of the circuit board. I don't believe. Nope. Okay, so we're relying on them that they silk screened all these numbers on here. And again, you may want to wipe all this stuff off. Although I've wiped this off a couple times, it seems to really be taking the solder. So R1, R1 is mm, somewhere hereabouts. I could cheat and look at Darwin's kit, but uh, a little hunting won't hurt anything. This is one of the things that's fun about kits, is you know, it's hunting and pecking, and it's not having the the item itself, it's the the it's the chase, you know. Let's see here, I don't see R1 right off the bat. There's diode one. This is a small kit. I should be able to find this lickety split. R10, R8, R1, there it is. Right there. Uh -huh, I'll have you now. So I'm just going to set that on there and see what it's going to take. I think what I might do. I'm going to give the leads just a gentle bend. What the heck are you doing in there? And, uh, yeah. Okay. See if we can get these. Hmm. It's more of a bend than I thought. Okay. Yeah, so I want you to put a little solder down. I've had really good luck. 
doing this to both sides at the same time. Yeah, we'll just take the old needle nose. And I defied conventional wisdom here, and I'm just going to. I'm just going to tack that down and get my trusty screwdriver and hold this side down. Okay. That actually works pretty good. Like I said, I think the less you dink around with that, the better off you are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to nick that with the knife and see if I can just break that. I could just trim it. Yeah, it's not going to work. Okay. No big deal. We'll just carefully. So there we go. Get the resistor down. How are we looking there? looks better off camera because it's all this stuff is very shiny so I'll tell you what I'll put a few resistors down and come back when I get them all bolted into place how's that sound take it easy oh thanks for popping back we're kind of progressing along here and I've got um, all the fixed value resistors and all the capacitors that are fixed value that are commercially made. And I was installing the transistor here. There's really not a lot to see. You just trim them. And what I've been doing is uh, putting just a little blob of solder on each pad and then trimming the component, making sure it fit well, and then just tacking it down. And then I've been taking and soldering the other side, then going back and tacking the original side. This seems to work pretty good. I decided to come, when I came to the transistors, I thought I'd show you how I was doing this, and just maybe a little trick. Hmm, that's interesting. Die. Weird. Hmm. I don't know if I noticed that or not. Hmm. It's a bit odd. These transistors. They've got solder on the leads. I don't know if they've been used or somebody just tinned them. Anyway, it doesn't matter. What I decided to do was use the board as a little jig to bend the leads of the transistors. So I've been putting that on one side and just bending it over and you just go straight out and do that to the other side and then the middle one. So you're doing the collector and the emitter. And then just kind of neaten that up a little bit, and it makes just a tiny little step in there. Then go back and <clears throat> kind of fit the transistor on there. You can roughly trim the leads. Don't trim them too short. Just just rough them up, just enough to kind of get an idea where the thing's going to sit. Like here. Excuse me. God. My feet need to be a bit bigger. I'm just going to set that, kind of dress those leads up, and kind of set that in there, and then just trim them up a little bit more. And just, if you don't have to cut it all at once, just kind of sneak up on it. There you go. That uh, looks like it's going to fit pretty good. Just trim that one up a tiny bit. Okay. The soldering iron is so hot for this project, I actually hooked it up to one of my Variax and turned it down. I turned it to about 100 volts. It seems to have just enough uh, heat to solder with. 
So I'm just putting a little blob of solder, just quick as a bunny on there. And then I'm going to just tack one lead. I've been doing the middle lead first. I don't think it makes any difference. You really can't get these transistors in wrong. The tab goes one direction. It's uh, screened onto here. And we just tack those in nice and neat. I'm kind of heating the pad and then, this, then the component actually kind of falls down in there. I'll just do the other one here while I'm here. I'll have to show you just in case you didn't see that very well. These leads are plenty long on this transistor. The, all the transistors on here are the same so you don't have to worry about getting them in the wrong spot. Again, I just butted that up against there and formed that lead to make a little step. Like that. And I'm basically just cutting that lead length in about half. It's plenty long, but it'll give me a little bit more room to wiggle that into place. We're doing the last transistor here. And I'm just going to lay that in there and kind of neaten that up a tiny bit. And we'll just trim that down a bit more. Let's see how that's going to fit. That looks plenty good. So once again, I'm just going to put a very small blob of solder. Um, it's closest to the center of the transistor outline. And kind of line that up. And just tack that lead. It just sucks it right up on there. You don't have to go back and redo a bunch of stuff or fiddle around. Just make sure that's kind of pushed down on the board. The board's so shiny it really makes it tough, but you can see here. There we go. So we're getting along pretty far. <laughs> Should have, uh, according to the instructions, I should have built a gimmick and installed it. C9, right there. But I'll come back to that. Actually, I got a call from Darwin. We were just BSing. And he said that there was an addendum to this kit. And he was going to send it to me, so I kind of stopped. And he thought the addendum had something to do with the gimmick capacitors. So I'm kind of leaving that out on purpose right this second. Um, I sent an email off. I believe I told you that or wrote that as a little comment on one of the emails. And I'd heard back from the... Uh, I'm not sure if this person supplies the kits or they put the kits together, whatever. They were in charge of missing parts and uh, basically told the truth, which is, I got this kit kind of secondhand, and the speaker is missing, and I don't know if it was lost, or we never got it, or it was eaten by a dingo, or whatever, but uh, I don't believe it was, wow, I don't believe it was missing, I believe it was lost, and could I get a replacement, I'd be happy to pay for it, and the shipping, and I got an email back, basically in a nutshell, saying, um, bad news I don't have any of these speakers good news is I can get you the person and tell you where these came from and you can purchase it directly um, that's fine that's acceptable my only fear is that it came from some place where the shipping is like thirty dollars for one little part so I don't know what I'm gonna do there but at least I heard back from them and it was given some you know information that's uh, one of the things about these kits is you're going to have to support them, you know, no matter how, I guess, silly the outcome may be. So that's where we're at. Um, what I've got left to do, according to the instructions, I basically have got about a page of stuff done. This is a page worth. Um, in this kit, 
like I said, they use this gimmick capacitor, and all it is is two pieces of wire that are twisted together like you would a bread wrapper, one of the wire bread wrappers, and then it's got here, and that forms a capacitor. Uh, again, I'll have to wait for Darwin's email and see what's going on. Looks like I got a mount to, uh, up to coming up. I've got to mount this transformer and the uh, the jack that goes over here. Um, what else? Mount the speaker. Uh, not critical. We'll tough that out. Mm, the variable capacitor, which goes right here, the tuning capacitor, and it'll sit here. I need to review this again. There is some uh, some information on the kind of their their YouTube channel or somebody's YouTube channel about trimming this. And I'll have to look at that and see what that's about. Nothing critical, critical. We're moving on pretty good. Actually, I stopped a little bit and ate some lunch and did a few chores, mounting the potentiometers. Mm, what else? Oh, looks like we're getting down to... Uh, what else? The switch, some wiring. Um, looks like we're d just about done. There's maybe a page or two left. Looks like after you get the, all the components on here is to mount the board and the PC board, which basically consists of me zooming out. Sorry. I need a camera person. There's no pay in it. Basically, you're going to do this and drive some, some screws through the front. Um, mounting some clips on there. And that's about it. There's really about... There are two pages, but it's more like one and a half. Really, there's a huge photo here. So there's really not a lot left to do. A person could complete this in a day, but I might give it a rest. Like I said before, um, part of the enjoyment of these kits is just taking your time and, and, and kind of making them own, your own, fiddling them and fitting the parts and taking a, you know some pride in your work. I mean, I don't think I'd be afraid to put a little plaque on here that said that was built by me. Years ago, it used to be um, if you worked... You know, if you were the bread maker or the shoe horseshoe or the blacksmith is what it really is. Um, there were marks, maker's marks or guild marks, and it was kind of the it was kind of the union label that said that this was a quality product and uh, let you know who built the thing and people were proud of what they built. Nowadays I don't other than the brand name, I don't see any marks or maybe inspected by, but they're just anonymous faces. Or they're not even faces, they're just anonymous marks. The infamous Inspector 12, or whatever the joke was. I don't think those people are accountable for anything. I even see that on older stereo equipment. It says inspected by, you know, I don't know, Joseph Young or whoever. Well, Joseph's probably long gone. And if it was made in Japan, it probably wasn't his real name anyway. So, I don't know, think of a clever Japanese name. So there's a few little trinkets, but we're getting down to, looks like we're mounting bigger bigger and bigger stuff. That's kind of a typical on these boards, or these kits, is you start as low as possible and you start building up. That way the bigger components, or sometimes the way they're placed, don't interfere with, you know, how things are built. Like, you're not going to have a fun time trying to put these resistors in the middle of these three big capacitors. It's going to be a bit of a nuisance. So There you go. There's a little bit of thinking going on there. Oh, well. So, I think I'm going to give it a rest. And maybe a little, a little piece of advice. Uh, it comes time to put your kit away. Um, you know, you can gather up all your tools and set them on your tray or... Maybe put them in the lid of a shoebox or something like that. So your soldering iron is cooled down. Put that away. Kind of sweep up the area. Um, if you've got a dedicated area, you may not. You may be able just to pick up and walk away. Although I find that uh, if you organize all your tools and put them all away in a nice neat pile, 
That way if uh, creatures like raccoons in the night come by, or small furry animals, who should remain nameless that sound like the word cat, if they happen to get on your workbench and the light be full of things, maybe the tray won't get knocked over. Well, this has been fun. I'm having a good time. If you like this kind of stuff, let me know. Um, there are other thousands and thousands of other little kits and trinkets to build. I don't know how this is going to operate. That's part of the fun of this. I might go to all this trouble and might be a dud. I might go to all this trouble and might be fun as hell. I've never had very good luck with regen radios. Most of them turn into squealing boards of doom. But then again, I've never applied good RF techniques to them. Um, probably the first technique is to not build them on pieces of wood, just with the loose components. This, this is a quantum leap above anything I've ever built. The other thing too is I think some of those kits, or some of those documents to build items like that are a bit theoretical. Okie dokie. Take it easy. Have a great day.